I became a chef at an early age, which I enjoyed greatly. Uh, working in Brighton, visiting the, the fish market regularly or having fish delivered into the restaurants that I was working in, it triggered this interest, this desire to understand more about the sustainability of that. That triggered a journey into marine biology, marine ecology, and in parallel with that, 20 years ago, began understanding more about climate change, the risks of climate change. And the combination of marine ecology, climate change and understanding of that really brought me into offshore wind and working in offshore renewables gives that opportunity really to seek to mitigate climate change in some small way. My name's Sean Leake and I'm the offshore and EIA consents manager for the Codling Wind Park. So that environmental impact assessment is really an umbrella under which we collect all of the data to understand where we're going to put the project or the impacts from that project through to proposing future mitigation, future monitoring, things like geophysical surveys to understand the seabed and then aerial surveys, vessel-based surveys to understand the birds that are there, marine mammals. It's probably the largest data set I've ever seen for an offshore wind farm. Ornithology is a, is a key area for consideration for any offshore wind farm at all. At Codling, we've got a data set which is almost unprecedented in that we've got survey data from the original Codling, which goes back to 2009, and then we've got further surveys undertaken in 2013-14. More recently, we've then got two years of um, a combination of vessel-based survey and aerial survey. We have an understanding of the birds that are present, we have an understanding of the height that they're flying at, and that can then inform the turbine designs because we have it within our power to be able to increase the tip clearance. That height can be changed in order to minimise impacts for certain species that have a flight height that may put them at risk of collision. It's commonly the case that wind farms across the UK, for example, and other jurisdictions within Europe, the minimum tip clearance would be set at 22 metres. But for this project, we've actually increased it. It's approaching now 36 to 37 metres minimum tip height, and that's specifically to help manage the impacts on kitty weight. And the other thing we've sought to do is identify areas that are important for those species that are sensitive to disturbance. Species like the guillemots and, and razorbill red-throated diver that we recognise have this sensitivity to displacement. Codling will be bringing forward a vessel management plan to ensure that impacts to those species as they're closer to the coast will be minimised. As the export cable comes from the array area through to what we call landfall, we recognise that that intertidal area is a special area of conservation for benthic habitats, for seabed habitats, but it's also a special protection area for a number of bird species. So the Codling project will be bringing forward a seasonal restriction within that intertidal area to avoid those kind of key critical periods really. And in terms of that personal story, that professional story, and looking ahead, being able to contribute in some small way to the possible construction of a project that will make such a positive contribution towards Ireland's climate targets, the world's climate change focus and climate change targets. It makes me immensely proud to be part of. <laughs>